from the News Channel 5 Network, this is Urban Outlook. Hello and welcome to Urban Outlook. I'm April Eaton. Thank you so much for being with us today. Many families get in a financial bind sometimes. Depending on whose study you believe, there are anywhere from half to 76% of American families living paycheck to paycheck with little money in savings, little money to help provide a cushion or a soft landing if something should happen like the loss of a job or an illness of a family member. Well, Rooftop Foundation was started to provide temporary help to families experiencing a financial emergency. Here to provide more details on how the program work uh, is Julia Gildemeister, who's the executive director of Rooftop Foundation. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you for this opportunity. Well, as I said, there's so many mm -hmm. things that can impact a family, so many small things sometimes, especially if you're living paycheck to paycheck. So talk a little bit about how Rooftop Foundation got its start. Rooftop started in 2006 after a lady walked into Christ Church Cathedral downtown and um, was greeted there by um, one of their outreach ministry um, staff members and she said she needed help with her rent. And he said, well, come on in, we'll, we, will, um, we will help you. And um, she, he said, come on, we'll go call 211, the United Way hotline. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, I've already called United Way hotline and they told me to go to a church. So here I am. And then he said, come on in. And they worked to help him. And shortly thereafter, he got in touch with 12 or 15 large churches in downtown Nashville and said, you know, if, if United Way is going to refer folks to, uh, to churches for assistance, maybe we ought to find a way that we can work together and uh, pool our funds and, pool our, and, and create a service so that we can help these folks. Wow. One woman started such a major, mm -hmm. major initiative, it sounds like. Yes. And, and through the years, you've helped how many people who have come for help since then? Since, um, since that time, we have helped more than 4,400 people with more than $1.6 million in emergency financial assistance. Julia, what does that tell you? Because obviously, it, it, one thing it tells me is the program's working. There's a need, and you're serving that need. But the other mm -hmm. thing it tells me is that there are a lot of people who need help, uh, mm -hmm. which may not be such a great story, right? Right. Well, in that period of time when we helped 4,400 people, we had more than 20,000 applications. So still more to serve. Right. Then there is a huge unmet need in our community. And what are you finding? Because it's not just folks who are without work, as we were talking just earlier. It's right. people who are working hard every day, but they're still not making enough to make ends meet. So we're talking about the working poor. We are talking 70, 72 percent of our applicants are employed. And 73 percent are women. And 69 percent, no. 72% are mm -hmm. women um, with children at home. Mm. So pretty large numbers mm -hmm. of people who are not able to do what? Just pay one bill, pay multiple bills? What are you seeing through those doors these days? Sometimes what we see, often what we see is they, they get behind because of something um, one month. And it's hard to catch up. And like you said, it could be a, it could be a medical bill, it could be uh, a car repair. But it they they get behind that one month, and then all of a sudden it's the second month, and then they've got another month's worth of rent due, and it catches up to them very quickly. And then the landlord starts talking about eviction. Yeah. This is not a long-term solution, but certainly one to help people get on their feet again. Feet again. So talk mm -hmm. just a little bit about the guidelines. Uh, who qualifies, uh, mm -hmm. and, then, and then what do they need to do to prove that they need some help? Okay. Um, you must have a lease or mortgage in your name. You must, it must be a legal lease. You must have lived there at least three months you must be able to pay some portion of what you owe and be able to show that you have income coming in so that it will be sustainable after we help. Yeah. And um, you must be able to document what caused your financial crisis. So if your car broke down, you have to bring in um, re invoices from the car repair 
the automotive repair place. Or and, and that proof, uh, so say for instance someone gets behind mm -hmm. in their rent, maybe the notification from the lease, the landlord to say, you know, you owe two months, three months, whatever that amount may be, is the proof that they need to bring with them, correct? Well, no, not actually. They okay. need to bring what caused their, what, what was the crisis and gotcha. what, what was the cause, or if they went out of town for a funeral for a family member and that caused them to get behind, they might have to bring a copy of the obituary and, and copies of bills they paid on the way, motel, hotel, food, and documenting that they were out of town for that funeral. So they have to bring, we tell them in advance, we say, okay, if this is your circumstance, this is what, what we would need mm -hmm. to see. We also always check with the landlords and verify the amount owed and that um, what the situation is. It's only for Davidson County residents right now. Currently is, that's true. Is there an opportunity in the future or a goal in the future to expand the program and if so what does that look like do you um, think? We are hoping that um, in the near not too distant future we will be able to begin to expand into Williamson and Rutherford maybe Sumner counties the, the neighboring counties um, but that's that will be that's down the road a little bit. So still got some work there. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything that may disqualify someone? Uh, we talked about the qualifications, right. but on the flip side, are there things that might keep people from getting the assistance that, that Rooftop has to offer? We do not pay for deposits. We are, we, our program is to keep people in their homes, yeah. and we, are not, um, we do not provide assistance to obtain housing. We also do not provide assistance for assist, um, for uh, treatment centers or alcohol, I mean, alcohol and drug treatment centers or halfway houses or motels or hotels. It's got to be, per they've got to be in permanent housing. As the executive director, through the years, I'm sure you've, you've heard the stories of people that, that need help uh, pull at the heartstrings, mm -hmm. I know, but, but what really kind of stands out to you about society, uh, what's happened through the years to families who are just trying to make things work, trying to keep food on the table? Uh, in your opinion, what, what's happening out there to cause such a, a need uh, from people with this, with this type of assistance, some might say? Oh, there are, there are a lot of factors. You know, I, I think that um, there are a lot of people who work less than 30 hours mm -hmm. and they don't get benefits, so they don't get sick time. And if their child is sick, sick and they have to take time off, they don't get paid. Yeah. Um, I think that no minimum wage is an issue. They, our folks don't get paid. They don't get paid well. Yeah. And they work hard. Um, I think that they, um, and I think that rents in our city are very high. And some of them are very high for places that aren't in great shape. They may have very high utility bills because the insulation is poor. Mm. There are a lot of um, factors there. Yeah. So if people want to get in touch with Rooftop Foundation, what do they need to do? We have a website, which is www.rooftopnashville.com. Dot org, okay. and um, our phone number is 615-815-9012. And also, not only do you know people can come for you assist for assistance, but you probably, I'm thinking, are needing some donors as well to oh, help always, uh, always. keep those pots full so you can help more and more people. Absolutely. Our ability to, to help people is directly, direct, directly related to our ability to raise funds. Well, thank you so much, Julia. We appreciate you being here. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, another focus, uh, another focus on a program that's doing some great work in this Nashville community. We'll be right back after this. Stay with us. Um.